Hi Year 3, I hope you all had a lovely weekend. Thanks for joining me for today's maths lesson. Before we get started, let's have a look at who's been doing an amazing job on TT Rockstars. Here's how the leaderboards were looking on the 22nd of January. For the most coins, well done to Kaylee, Madison, Rahman, Maisie and Oscar for collecting lots and lots of coins. And well done to Jessica, Jacob, Rahman again, Tamara and Alexis for getting faster. And to Hera, Jacob, Thomas, Lucy and Oscar Dio for their improved accuracy. Lots of dojo points heading your way. And I wasn't surprised to see Oscar DA's name at the top of the leaderboard for the most coins because he was very proud of himself this week and rightly so for getting 88 correct answers on that mix of times tables in just three minutes. Brilliant job, Oscar. Wow. 88 correct answers in just three minutes. Brilliant. Well done, Oscar. And well done to everyone who went on TT Rockstars last week to practice their times tables. And as well as the TT Rockstars work, I was so impressed last week with all of the eight times table work that was emailed to us on Thursday and Friday. And also, some of the children have been working hard in the key worker bubbles in school as well. Let's take a look at some of their brilliant work now. job guys well done to you all you'll be getting some dojo points added by your teachers as well and i spotted lots of fantastic bar models in there and that's great because today we're going to be using some bar models again to solve problems but before we do that we need to get our brains warmed up with a math starter now i've actually today i'm going to share with you a math starter that we did last lockdown in year three but i know it was a popular one it's a great way to practice adding three one digit numbers let me show you how to play the game hi everyone Today I'm going to show you a quick and fun maths game that you can play at home with your family uh, that will help you practice adding three one-digit numbers together. It's a form of noughts and crosses, but instead of using crosses and circles, you use the one-digit numbers from zero to nine, as you can see I've put them down the side here. You make your noughts and crosses grid, as usual, but instead of putting a cross or a circle, you choose one of the numbers you can only use them once, so you've got to cross them off as you do it. And the winner is the first person to get three of their numbers in a row, but the total must be ten. Now, I'd love to show you today how it works, but I'm here on my own and I haven't got anyone with me who could actually play the game with me. So you're going to have to have a little... Sorry. A little go yourself. So, good luck as... Oh! What are you doing here? You've come to play the maths game. But I, I thought you were a phonics giraffe. You're going to have a go at the maths game. All right, but you're going to be sensible about it. All right, well, luckily, it looks like I have got someone to play with, so let's have a little go. But I hope there's going to be no shenanigans. If any of you know, this giraffe can be a little bit mischievous. Right, okay. So you've got the pen, so you can go first. All right, off we go. But, uh, where's the pen gone? Here you go, here's another one. Right, let's try again. And off we go. Uh, uh. Right, 
That's your last warning, here we go. You start with orange, just for that, I'm gonna start instead. Those can be your numbers, and these can be mine. Right, I'm gonna get started then, and I'm gonna choose up my side, I think I'm gonna start with the number five, I'm gonna put it right in the middle, okay? Right, where would you like to go? These are your numbers over here, look. Ah, uh -huh. you're gonna go for number four. All right, good choice. Now, you've blocked me going up there, so I'm gonna choose another number now. I think I'm gonna use my number three, and I'm gonna put it down in this corner. Let me see where I'm trying to go. Right, let's see if she spots it. Oh, you clever giraffe. You've spotted where I was gonna go, haven't you? All right, and she's using number three there, so I'm not gonna go there. Where else could I go then? Uh, I might try and go across here. So I'm gonna use my, I think I'm gonna use my number six. There we go. All right, there we go. Oh no, I've left a gap. Let's see. Oh, you think you've won? You're gonna put your number there? What's the problem? Oh, hang on, let's add them together. Three and four make seven, so what do you need to reach 10? Three, what's the problem then? Oh, you silly giraffe, you've used your number three already. Ah, uh, less of that. Have another pen, don't be a sore loser. You still haven't lost yet, you might get a chance. What other numbers can you use? You're gonna put a two there, okay. Right, how what total have you got? Four, five, six, seven. Add two more, mate, nine, bad luck. My turn again. Oh, right, hang on, what have I got here? Six, add three, six, seven, eight, that's nine. Nine and one, that goes together to make 10, so I can put my one there, and I've got a line making a total of 10. Good game, well done. Oh, you are a sore loser. Hope your family members are better sports. Have fun. I hope you have lots of fun playing that with someone in your family, and when your brain's warmed up, well, now it's time for today's learning objective, which is to use bar models again. But today we're going to use bar models to solve something called scaling problems. Let me show you. Scaling problems involve comparing amounts where one amount is twice as much, three times as much, four times as much, for example, as the other amount. For this example, it says, Leon has three sweets. Little Mo has three times as many sweets as Leon. How many sweets does little Mo have? Now, you might know that mentally, or you might use a bar model to help you. The bar models I'm going to draw for these scaling problems look a little bit different to the bar models we've used in the past week or so. I'm going to draw one box at the top for Leon's sweets, and then because little Mo has three times as many, I'm going to draw three boxes underneath. One, two, three. How many sweets did Leon have? Can you remember? That's right, it was three. So there are Leon's sweets. And here are little Mo's. Three times as many, so three boxes. Let's see if we can count in threes. Three, six, nine. Little Mo has nine sweets. Let's try an hour turn. Can you read the question with me? When he stepped through the door, Leon saw four white rabbits and five times as many doves. How many doves did he see? So... Can you try and draw some boxes to help you? Don't forget to draw the box for the white rabbits at the top. What number will go in there? And then, how many more boxes will be underneath? How many times more doves were there? Think about adding in that number and counting up to see how many doves there are in total. Press pause and have your best go. Press play again and we'll check together. Let's check. The first thing we're going to do is draw the box for the white rabbits. Now, we need one, two, three, four, five boxes for the doves, because it said there were five times as many. So if there's one box for the white rabbits, that's five boxes to show how many doves there were. One, two, three, four, and five. How many white rabbits were there? Let's write that number in. That's right, there were four. So every box has to have a four in, that stays the same. And all we need to do to find out the total number of doves is count in fours, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, to find out that there were 20 doves. 
How did you get on? If you want to have a go at the one chilli challenge today, well then here are your problems. Some of you might feel confident enough to try and work out some of these questions mentally. However, if you're not sure straight away, why not use the bar model and the squares like I did to try and find the answers? Good luck. Now, if you're feeling ready, let's have a look at some slightly trickier two chilli questions. We're going to need to read these questions extra carefully to find out what it's asking us. Let's read this one together. There were 30 adults in the circus tent and three times as many children. How many people were in the tent all together? Press pause now. Have a think about the question and how you might work it out. Could you use the bar model method drawing the squares again to help you? When you've had your best go, press play again and we'll look through it together. Let's check together. Let's start by drawing the box for the adults. We know that. And then, how many times more children were there? That's right, three times as many. So we need three boxes underneath. One, two, three. Let's put 30 up here, because we know there were 30 adults. And if there were three times as many children, we need to put 30 in each of these three boxes. Now, on the other ones, we just added up what was on the bottom. However, hopefully you noticed in the question, it said how many were there all together? How many people? So we, that's including the adults all together. 30. Well, let's use our knowledge of the three times table to help us. If we know three times four is 12, then we know 30 times four is... 120. Well done. Here's another example of a scaling problem that we need to read very, very carefully. Let's read the question together. There are some jugglers at the circus and five times as many clowns. If there are 30 clowns, how many jugglers are there? Read it again carefully and think, how is that question different to the ones we've looked at so far? And once you've read it again, press pause and see if you can work out how many jugglers there are. Good luck. Now that one was really tricky because if here's the amount of jugglers and it said there were five times as many clowns, it told us how many clowns there were, not how many jugglers they were. Let's draw the five boxes for the clowns now, I can't put 30 in the top box because that's how many clowns there are. What could we do? Hmm. Let's see. If I put 30 here, I know these five boxes are going to total 30. What goes into 30 five times? 30 divided by 5. Do you know? Ah, it's 6. So, 30 split up into those five times is six. So, because the boxes are the same, that means that there are six jugglers at the circus. Here are your tricky two and three chilli challenges for today. For the two chilli, there are three questions here that you could use bar models to help you solve, but you'll need to read them extra carefully, especially those last two, to try and work out what the question is asking you. Once you've had a go at the two chilli challenges, if you're feeling extra confident, press play again and there's a problem as our three chilli challenge. Here it is. A magician has 18 cards in total. So for this one, it's given us the total amount of cards. There are twice as many red cards as black cards. Can you work out how many red cards there would be? Well done year three for all your fantastic scaling problems work today. Tune in tomorrow's lesson and we'll show you the answers at the very start. And don't forget to send all your brilliant work today to the year three email address. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye bye.